Hello and welcome to this week's special presentation called Saddle Up and Ride. My name is Steve Chappell, the Director of Educational Services here at VectorVest, and I'm super fired up about this week's special presentation. First thing I want to point out is we're going to show you how you could have been up 3% in a single trading day using the VectorVest Derby. We'll then show that the portfolio started to pull back as we headed into the all-important Fed meeting here in the United States, uh, where Janet Yellen always comes under the microscope. It wasn't long after that the market really started to turn sour over a really quick period of time. The VectorVest composite fell 30 cents. So from there, what we decided to do was go ahead and take our profits on the day. Here's a quick look at the trade history for that day. You can see October the 28th. You can see that we ended up making money on seven of the positions that we traded that day. And again, we walked away with 2% in a single day. And that brings us to the all-important Jockey Club. We're going to unleash it starting Monday of next week. It's going to be exclusive to real-time Derby subscribers. Newcomers may take advantage of a special $29 offer we have in tonight's views. And email invitations and reminders will be sent out this weekend. These webcasts will begin promptly at 9 a.m. in the morning each day as we start analyzing pre-market activity before the bell even rings. And a lot of times we have a pretty good idea on what we're going to trade before trading actually begins. Uh, another important note is Canada will have their own jockey club starting one week later on 11-9. And so invitations for that will go out next week. Now just stick around, sit back, relax, and enjoy a session we filmed this week of the all-new Jockey Club. All right, good morning, everyone. Looks like we've got everyone in attendance at this time. So we're going to go ahead and begin our next installment of the VectorVest Jockey Club. Again, my name is Steve Chappell, the Director of Educational Services here at VectorVest. I'm delighted to be your host this morning. And uh, even though I'm scooping out massive amounts of leaves in my pool and dealing with things outside my circle of influence, uh, I'm not going to let that bring me down because every day is a day where we can utilize the derby and try to make profits in the stock market. And so let's just jump right into it. Here with our agenda, the first thing that we're going to do this morning is establish a directional bias. And uh, we're going to do that in a, in a few ways, and we'll, we'll show you that in just a bit. But we're going to do some analyzing of the futures. We're going to look at the VectorVest homepage to get a feel for what that's telling us. And uh, we're also going to use the Derby itself as a market timing mechanism. And it's really, really super powerful. So uh, that's really our trump card, our, our ace in the hole, uh, if you will. The next thing we're gonna do is identify some movers and shakers. We're gonna see what kind of stocks are moving in the Derby this morning, uh, what kind of news may be surrounding those stocks, and also what strategies are leading the horse race. What, which ones are moving, which ones are flying in the pre-market, uh, in the hopes, in the anticipation that we can start to make some decisions even before the market opens up. Uh, on some days, we may have to wait. Uh, today looks like it may be one of those days uh, as I was analyzing the markets earlier. But we'll, you know, we'll try to make some decisions as quickly as possible to get into the market as soon as possible uh, to give us every opportunity or every chance to make some money today. Uh, the next thing is, you know, we're going to start placing our bets. Like I said, hopefully before the market opens up, uh, but we'll have to wait and see how all the market timing is shaking out uh, at that time. And then finally, we'll have some, uh, you know, general training and some Q&A tutorials uh, that we can fill some of the remaining time with after we open our trades in the market this morning. Okay, so let's, uh, let's put first things first and let's go to establishing a directional bias. One of the first things we want to do is check the futures just to get an idea on how the market is likely going to open up this morning. Uh, then we're going to, again, analyze the home page, take a quick peek at, most importantly, our VectorVest composite, a quick peek at the color guard and some other items. And we're also going to monitor the percent bullish to percent bearish derby searches. There's a little nice pie chart that we're going to introduce to you this morning as well. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring us over into VectorVest. Now that we're here, um, first things first, let's check the futures and see what's going on. What I'm going to do is open up any web browser that I have on, you know, your PC at home will be fine. Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, doesn't matter. <clears throat> we're going to type in Bloomberg. All right, so I'm just going to do Bloomberg.com. 
And we're going to check a couple things in Bloomberg today because uh, it may give us a better frame uh, on what's going on. Let's first check the futures. Uh, I'm going to go to the markets section on Bloomberg. So you, hopefully you can see where my cursor is now. It should have illuminated markets and it's white in color at this stage. Once you do that, I can come over to the left and click on stock futures. When I choose stock futures, it's going to populate those uh, onto the screen for us. And we're going to pay most attention uh, to the top several, in particular the Dow Jones. We can see that it's up uh, 18 in the pre-market. Now, it was higher at one stage, up 24, so it softened just a bit. Uh, we can see the 500 slightly higher and also the NASDAQ uh, slightly higher. So they're up, but they're not up in a big way just yet. Okay, so that's good information to know, though. It looks like all the uh, markets want to at least try to open higher today. Now, let's go to a next critical piece of information you may want to take a peek at uh, every morning just to get a feel for it until you um, get an understanding of economic events that are coming your way. Uh, if I go to markets at the top again and then slide over to the economic calendar, there is a significant event that's going to occur today. Uh, should be at 2 o'clock is when we normally see this occur. And sure enough, uh, the Fed will be meeting today at 2. So Janet Yellen will be under the microscope. And uh, that's something to certainly be aware of. Um, you know, the, uh, the huge discussion on will interest rates uh, uh, be raised or are we just going to kick the rock down the road uh, till later meetings? You know, all of that's going to come into play. So there might be some indecision today leading into that meeting. That's really sort of the framework that I'm trying to present here. It may be a lackluster beginning to the trading day today just because we have this Fed meeting sort of looming over us uh, into, you know, this afternoon. All right, with that information in, in play, let's now move into VectorVest because we can really get some wonderful insights uh, from the VectorVest platform. And uh, let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of Bloomberg. When we come into VectorVest, first thing we want to always just be aware of, it says that the color guard now is mildly bullish and now has switched back to neutral and says that VectorVest advocates caution when buying stocks at this time. All right. Now, one thing I want you to notice, you saw that that needle moved. And some of you might be saying, well, how did that happen? Well, the reason is if I come up to the top right, in the tools um, button, there's a drop down menu there. And in the drop down menu, I can select use extended hours. Now, when I do that, it allows us to absorb the pre market activity that's occurring before the market's officially open. And so there's activity that uh, concludes at 8 p.m. last night, and there's activity that resumes this morning at 8 a.m., leading into the 9 30 opening bell. All right, and so what we see is that the vector vest composite currently is slightly higher. I mean, ever so slightly. We're going to go ahead and still call it flat, but slightly higher on a current basis. All right. Now, that's lifted us on a current basis from three red lights yesterday to three yellow lights uh, as of uh, pre-market activity this morning. So a slight improvement there as well. All right. So futures are slightly up. Vector vest composite is slightly up. Color guard is slightly improving compared to yesterday. So let's move into uh, perhaps the most important thing to keep your eye on once you get that information behind you. And that is going to be a peek at the market timing graph. You know, we always talk about how important market timing is, and it is the single most important thing uh, that's going to help you make your decisions. So no better place to consult and even in the pre-market activity is the market timing graph. It's, it's crucial, okay? So from here, we're going to go right up to the top. I'm going to click on the timing tab, and in there, I'm going to go to the market timing graph. All right, now when I click the market timing graph, first thing that you might, it might jump off the page that you have only got price on here. I'm just concerning myself with price on a current basis, and uh, I'll just reiterate, you know, we came up here, on an end of day basis, kind of came right up to, <clears throat> looks like we kind of broke through resistance, but then started to hover around it uh, and have now fallen off uh, from that resistance. But, but certainly we're up in that resistance area where the market really hasn't made a, its mind which direction it really wants to go quite yet. 
okay? Because I'm still seeing some higher lows uh, even after the last couple of days activity uh, on the last few weeks of bars. From here, we want to dial into a minute chart. We want to take more advantage of what's happening right now given this context, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right up to the top and switch it from end of day to intraday from the drop down. In intraday, I'm gonna slide over to one minute bars and I'm just gonna choose best fit. It puts the perfect number of bars on the screen for you to digest the information. So when I click on best fit, uh, here we see what's happening, all right? And what's happening is, here's the, here's the uh, after hours activity last night. Looks like it was treading higher. I'm gonna scan us back just to absorb that movement a little bit better. You'll notice that the light blue shaded area, that is all of your after hours and pre-market activity. The light shaded area over here on the left, that was the actual you know, market hours up until 4 p.m. We saw that last evening, there was a nice little surge in the after hours activity, a gap down really to about where the market closed yesterday, and it's been treading a little bit higher from there. So one of the things I can do here, because it's so close, I can put last close on, and I can see that we're actually a little bit lower. Let me zoom in back to um, this last half of the graph here. We're actually a little bit lower than yesterday's close uh, as of this stage, now that we're in the chart. And so while we see some upward movement here, it's certainly been a struggle. You can see it's just kind of bouncing around in almost like a sawtooth kind of a fashion. It's not as clearly defined as the, as the pre-market activity that we saw yesterday, but it is still establishing a sort of slight upward bias. So everything that we're seeing so far this morning has a slight upward bias to it. Just nothing is just jumping off the page saying, yeah, you know, it's, it's go time quite yet. So we're gonna keep taking a peek at this information and we're gonna hope that the market continues to trade higher and, and make our job easier uh, for executing orders, hopefully before even the market opens up today. All right, so we'll come back to this, uh, but again, just the quick observation, the market's moving higher ever so slightly, uh, but we're still, still a little bit below yesterday's close even so. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and minimize the graph. All right, now I'm gonna take you to really the reason you all came, and that is to look at the Vector Vest Derby. We really wanna make that the centerpiece because listen, it's got market timing and stock selection and what to buy, when to buy, all of that built in to the tool itself. And so if I click on the Derby tab within your product, okay? If I click there, it's gonna open up a whole world of opportunity for us. And one of the things I want you to get a habit in, in doing first and foremost is to observe the pre-market activity in the Derby. And to do that, there's a couple of very important settings. So I want to make sure you, you know, clearly know that the next few moments here are critical to set yourself up for success. And what I mean by that is we're going to come over to the left. We're going to change our analysis mode from buy to hold to today's Derby. All right, now when I do that, initially, if your settings are like ours, you know, you're going to see just a, a bunch of zeros, you know, flat performance. That's because we're using the market open uh, as our entry price. And of course, the market has not opened yet. When I change this to prior close, I'm going to change the entry price to prior close. All the lights come on. And now the horse race has already begun. And when we talk about horse race, you know, the Derby was built with the spirit of a horse race in mind and that the, the, the strategies that are moving and shaking, the ones that are moving faster than any others, they gravitate towards the very top of this list. And of course, the leading horse should be right at the very top. What we see up here right now, honestly, is the same thing I've been observing all morning. We have a mixture of bearish and bullish strategies listed up there for us. Okay, now before we dial into those, let's stick with the subject of timing because Derby, first and foremost, can also improve your timing. And what I want you to really focus on and really pay attention to is the summary window uh, down towards the bottom left of the control panel. Okay, and in there you see three pi graphics. 
we're going to focus on the last two. Those are the ones that are of the most importance to us this morning. The first one, the middle one here, is titled bullish. And here we're observing the movement of all of the bullish strategies contained within the derby. What we see is a pie graph depicting that movement. Uh, the green is depicting the amount of winning uh, strategies or searches in the product that are bullish, which right now is 67 or a little over half of the bullish strategies are making money. Uh, the red are the ones that are going down or are losing money pre-market. That currently stands at 40. So we're starting to see a little separation this morning in that more of the bullish strategies are making money than are losing money. Now, there still is a good bit of searches out there that have not traded. None of the stocks in the, in the searches have begun trading yet before the market opens. There's 22 of those. So where those fall as of the open might become critical to the decision that we make. In other words, what we really like to see is we really like to see a separation here in that percentage of at least 60% or more uh, on either the bullish or bearish side making money. Right now we're at 51 and a half. We'd really like to see that get up to about 60 to feel like we have a better opportunity uh, to go ahead and pull the trigger, okay? So if we analyze the bull side compared to the bearish side, here you can see a smaller area of green. So right away, you know, on the pie graph. So right away, it's a smaller percentage of strategies making money on the bearish side so far this morning. If we look, of course, at the losers, that's a bigger percentage of that, of that pie. And it looks like most of those are already in play. All right, so I gotta say, I'm leaning bullish observing this, but I'd really like to see an, a little bit more of an increase in the winning searches, the winning strategies before I really like to pull the trigger. Okay, so we'll be, we'll be monitoring this uh, throughout the pre-market and into the market open if, we, if necessary, uh, to look for that watermark of 60%. Okay, that looks like what we're trying to do this morning uh, at this stage. Now, on to the searches, because while all that continues to develop, while the VVC continues to tick on minute bars, while the uh, stocks within all the searches continue to tick along in the pre-market, we can still make some observations just looking at the strategies and the stocks within them before the bell opens as well. Okay, and so to do that, I'm gonna go right up to the top strategy, which right now is Cito Sinkers. I want you to notice that it clearly titles it as a bearish strategy. And uh, let's take a look. Let's dial in. All right. So to see the contents, you know, see, see here it says 10 stocks are up a percent and a half. If I click on the bar, it opens it up. And now I can see the 10 individual positions. And lo and behold, there is one stock in here that's really moving and moving down in a pretty big way. And that is Intercept Pharmaceutical, ICPT. And anybody that's been investing for the last few years probably has heard of this uh, particular company. They have made wild price moves time and time again in the past. Let's go and find out why it's moving down. You see, it says that the gain per share is $24. Well, we're short. The stock has gone from 167.64 as of the close yesterday to $143 as of the pre-market right now. So it's dropping in price. If we were short that position, we'd already be making a good chunk of money. Okay, so our return on investment would be just under 15%. Now let's see why it's moving. That can be critical. So if I right-click on the stock, I can then come up and go to uh, View Stock News right at the top of the right click menu. And when I pull that up, just depends on your settings, you might have uh, Financial Times. Most of you probably have Yahoo Finance linked. All right, and either one's gonna give you the same information. It's gonna collect all the news articles that are, that are uh, uh, hitting, the, hitting the streets. And what we see at the very top, Intercept Pharma is crashing. All right, and I do have some more description in just Without having to dig into that article, right below it at 7.31 a.m., it says Intercept Pharma announces results of phase two trial of OCA in NASH patients. Uh, this is a liver drug, and it looks like 
<clears throat> when you dig into these articles, you'll see that they're getting a lot of mixed results. It's helping improve some patients and others, it's not having any effect at all. And so it's not performing as well as they might have hoped. And of course, that's really one of the big reasons uh, why the stock is, is not performing well on a current basis. So you can, you know, you can click on any of these articles. It'll link you right out to the article. Intercept announces phase two trial of in treatment for adults in Japan with liver inflammation, okay, non-alcohol related. And uh, basically the treatment reached the desired results for some patients, but not so much for others. And the article goes on to give you more in intel. What this means to me is that if I'm looking for a real quick trading opportunity today, Intercept Pharmaceutical might be one that fits the bill in, where, in which I could go short that particular stock and uh, you know, be in there maybe just to, up until towards the close of the market today. Watch that thing pretty good, but we could make some money being short that particular stock today is, is the general feeling that I would have. All right, now, that's what's moving a lot of the short strategies. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Now, the next thing is uh, we have rising CI stealth stocks as the next one. Oh, boy, that was almost a tongue twister. <laughs> rising CI stealth stocks. And uh, you can see this one's bullish in nature. There's 10 stocks again found here, which is great to see. In fact, I'm requiring that there's 10 stocks found. When I open that up, here we can see uh, the 10 long stocks that this strategy's found. And I gotta tell you, it's pretty interesting evidence that this strategy may wanna work higher today. Because as I look at all of the stocks, you know, most of them are at reasonable price points. A couple of them down there are a little uh, lower dollar value. Uh, you could skip those if you wanted to. Uh, but as we look at the gains and losses, the return on investments pre-market, we're starting to see a good number of these stocks. Uh, one, two, three, four, five of them, in fact, are trying to tread higher right at the open today. That's good information. Perhaps even better information is to slide over here to the right and we have a portfolio mini graph. And in the portfolio mini graph, oop, looks like we got some new derby leaders. We'll have to go back up there and take a look in a second. And you can see it started over here at 8 a.m. and it's working its way all the way across to where we currently are at uh, 9.23 a.m. All right, and you can see that the movement was pretty solid, pretty steady upward right up here until about five minutes ago, starting to break down a little bit, but we're, you know, we're seeing a nice pattern there. We'd love to see it pulling all the way to the very edge of the chart though, as an ideal scenario. Now, let me go ahead and close this up. It looks like we had some uh, new strategies pop up to the top of the list, and it looks like a good number of them are bearish. Uh, if we come down to our summary, just to take a peek and see if that's having any impact here, uh, we can see that there's been a, a slight reduction in the percentage of bullish strategies that are making money. All right, so that's starting to fade a little bit. Uh, and I don't see any real significant pickup in the bearish strategies that are making money uh, as of the 924 uh, time frame. So while we were able to get in and really have some decisive action yesterday uh, about this time or even earlier, really, uh, today we're going to have to, I think, wait and see how this shakes out. Uh, into the open. And so I want to keep us framed around coming back here and observing this summary and the strategies that are at the top of the list uh, when the market begins to cook, begins to open up at the opening bell at 930. Uh, but let's look at these top derby strategies now. Cito sinkers. Maybe it'll change our mind. Uh, when I come in here, again, there's your intercept pharmaceutical. So in large part, that's what's driving this equity curve. So I see further evidence that that may be a good trading opportunity today, okay? Uh, if I look at triple reekers, again, just the one stock, well, another one's opened up here and it's slightly down. That's uh, Zafgen, okay? But you see about the same shape and that's really because Intercept is driving it. We've got hold your nose. Yep, you know, same story. Uh, we've got Cito's hook and sinkers. Yeah, same story here. It looks like Intercept is continuing to... Uh, to really move down pre-market, even up, you know, it's not at its peak. The peak came in at around 8.31 a.m. in the pre-market, but it's moving back that direction as of the last couple of ticks. Uh, see, worst stocks over $20. Of 
Got a couple of little tiny movers in here, but nothing earth shattering with Esperon and uh, Esperion, excuse me, and uh, Chenier Energy. Rising CI Stealth Stocks is trying to hang in there. Let's go back and take a quick look at the VectorVest composite movement, see if we're starting to get any clues uh, back in that territory. So to do that, I'll just bring that graph back up for you. And here's the interesting news here. It looks like our upward trend is still intact. Uh, you can see that we're making higher lows. Price is now above yesterday's close. And uh, while it's kind of, you know, capitulating here a bit or consolidating, last couple of bars were green. Last one coming in now is starting to tick red. Isn't it fun to watch these things uh, unfold right before your eyes? But really, if it continues to move up and continues to break through these highs, you know, you're leaning bullish based upon the vector vest composite. All right, now realize it's a soft movement right now. Uh, we're talking less than a couple of pennies at the very, at the very least. So to, to get a better feel for that, uh, I can minimize the graph. Go take a quick peek at the home page. Yeah, and we can see that we're fractional, a fractional penny higher. Okay. All right. So from here, let's go back into the derby, and we want to keep our eyes tuned to the derby. Uh, you know, we've got two minutes now, a uh, little over. We got uh, about two and a half minutes, we'll call it, till the market opens up. So we want to keep our eyes trained on the derby and see how things continue to shake out. One thing. Uh, because I'm antsy and I, you know, I like to get the, the information as fast as possible, you can click this refresh button from time to time at the top, and that'll make sure that you got the, uh, the fastest horse right at the top of the list. Okay, it does work on an automatic refresh, but in between those automatic refreshes, you can, of course, refresh it on your own. Cedo Sinker is still at the top. We still only have Intercept Pharmaceutical. One thing that we could do uh, is we could go ahead and issue a trade on Intercept Pharmaceutical. And uh, one way that we can do that, we can just right click, then we can go to um, Trade Now, say with Trade King. Uh, if I click that, it would bring up a window. When it does, you're going to notice that it loads up an order ticket. Now, we've connected Trade King to VectorVest with our trade now technology and in here uh, I could put a quantity let's say 100 shares of intercept and uh, we don't want to buy those we would sell them short okay with a limit uh, or we could go with a market order if we saw fit there's a lot of liquidity with intercept so you might be okay to do that just to make sure you got in the trade uh, you can put that order in good till cancelled or, or good for the day you can then preview it and send it off. Okay, now, from here, let's take a quick peek. We are 20 seconds away from the market opening up. So let's keep our eyes peeled. Let's see what happens uh, with the market as we hit the opening bell. All the anticipation is starting to build. Uh, it gives me goosebumps just sitting here watching it. <laughs> One of the things I'm starting to see, look at this. We're nearly there. We're at 57% bullish strategies making money more and more stocks are starting to open up opening bell just occurred we get a nice refresh and we're at 62 and a half uh, so what I could do is come over here looks like uh, Bo Blyers Bottom Fishers BMB uh, is right at the top of the list uh, and this is one that we might give some consideration to as I click on the bar uh, what we see is a majority of the stocks are making money and uh, they're it's moving up at a nice little pace. You see how it's pulling all the way into the top right-hand corner of that equity curve? Uh, that looks like a good selection if we're able to hold that percent bullish at 60. So I I'd like to see that hold for just a bit longer before we absolutely pull the trigger. I'm gonna go ahead and, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta get some blood in the game. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and send these over to a quick folio. Uh, when I do that, I click the, the uh, excuse me, I click the create quick folio button, all right, within the, uh, within the breakdown of the stocks, okay? When I click that, I can then open the portfolio now. When I do that, I now have a quick folio of Blyers uh, Bottom Feeders BMB, and you'll notice that I set mine up for an initial investment of just 20000 I did that because, you know, 
many of you may not want to put a hundred thousand dollars into something like this but you want to put a reasonable amount of money uh, of course here are all the stocks it tells me exactly the quantities that I'd want to buy so what I can do I can highlight all these stocks I can right click trade now with trade King all right and I can keep my quantity visible it's going to rank I want you to see this. It's going to rank the stocks in the same way they're found on the list in the quick folio. EMS is the top one, followed by HCLP, followed by LNTH. E. So all you got to do is look at the quantity. And what I can do is just simply put those quantities in. And uh, so we put 473 for the top one, 392 for the next one, 664 for the next one, 209, 455. 529, 227, 18. Oh, uh, there's Valiant. That's a higher dollar stock there. 199 and 687. Okay, so I could literally now just queue these orders up. I could put them in as limits, I could put them in as market orders, and then we could preview these orders. The order preview screen is going to come up. Uh, and of course, a lot of this is having to do with buying power uh, in the current account. Uh, but what I could do is go ahead and place those orders and uh, send them across to Trade King. Uh, and, uh, and you'll be trading them live. What we can do right now is take a quick peek and see how we're doing so far. All right, since we put these in there, you know, the commissions are going to hit us a little bit. We're only down 0.35%. The market's only been open for, you know, five minutes now. Okay, and we didn't get into them until a few minutes after the open. So we can continue to shake those down. Uh, next thing I can do is go back to the Derby. Uh, and in the Derby, you know, it's not holding that 60% that I'd like to see down there. We're seeing a mix. You know, we're seeing just a mixture here. Uh, and so for those of you that were more aggressive, I think we made the right call. Uh, for those of you that are more prudent to conservative, conservative in nature, that's why we have the 10 o'clock rule. You know, the 10 o'clock rule, we can continue to sit here and monitor uh, the internal rotation of these strategies uh, that are bullish compared to bearish and really wait and to see that number hold for a longer period of time before we absolutely pull the trigger. Uh, but other than that, you know, uh, again, I think we made the right decision at the time. Uh, let's go ahead and see how the market's performing. I can pull this dashboard. And since I have extended hours on, you can see that we were ticking, again, ever so slightly higher in the pre-market. Looks like we gapped and, and uh, are, fading, are fading that gap as of the open on a current basis. Okay. Now, that's not too terrifying. These, th these are things that you see time and time again. I'm not going to worry. Uh, one, one of the reason I'm not is with those positions that we traded, those positions that we traded, if we go right back to portfolios, I can turn stops on and get notifications on these stocks okay and so to do that I go right up to the settings box here we're gonna consult the genius have a little genius on our shoulder and he's gonna tell us exactly what to do so if I click on settings in there I can build a custom trading system don't let that scare you we're not gonna have to build an entire trading system all we're gonna do when I click that build trading systems button is uh, we're going to turn timing off. We've already made our decision, right? We're long those stocks. Some then I'm going to go to automation rules. When I go there, the default action is to buy long. I'm just going to click on stop criteria though, because that's all we need to worry about. Uh, I'm going to go to trailing stop. I'm going to dial this down to 5%. We want a good tight stop in there since there's still some uncertainty in today's action. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And then all I got to do is save it, and we're going to apply that to the existing positions. All right. Once I do that, all the stops will be placed, and now I see that they have filled. You saw those yellow triangles. That means the stops weren't on there quite yet. Now they are. And so now the genius is cooking. You can see that uh, the green wheel is spinning up here. We're long. We got 5% trailing stops on all the positions that we just put in. So we've mitigated risk. And that's key. If we're going to get in here with the Derby and, and do some uh, fast trading, some aggressive trading, we want to mitigate risk. And certainly we've done that with a 5% trail. Okay. So from there, let's go back and see what's, see what's happening. Let's go back to the Derby. And uh, back in the Derby, 
lo and behold, Blyer's Bottom Feeders is hanging in there, buddy. It's right up there in second position. All right, so it's moving its way up the Derby list. That's good to see. And uh, the only one that's outpacing it right now is S&P 600 small cap. If we click in there, woo-wee, look at this. Looks like Cloud Peak. A little $2.71 stock went up to 326 or 20%, and that's going to be your explosion uh, that's occurred there. Let's see what's going on with Cloud Peak. Uh, if I right-click there, view the stock news. Let's see, morning movers. Uh, Northrop Grumman Soares on bomber contract. Bop, bop, bop. Cloud Peak Energy. Here we go. Ah, looks like earnings related. related. Da, 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 da. Yep, earnings related. They must have beaten, exceeded. Yep, Cloud Peak tops, streets, third quarter forecast. There you go. That's all you need to know. Rising earnings leads to rising and higher stock prices in the future. And so we could get a little piece of Cloud Peak, right, if nothing else, because I don't, uh, maybe Roadrunner here down, you know, it's up 6.53%. Those are the ones that are running. Okay, those are the ones that are pushing that strategy up there. Uh, if we look at Blyer's bottom feeders, I think we made the right call still. Looks like uh, half the stocks there are performing pretty well. We got a better mixture of stocks that are performing well. Uh, you know, 8%, 3, 8, 5. All right, so we got some, we got some movers in there. Uh, let's go back to our uh, portfolios and just keep track of what's going on here. Now, in this uh, Blyer's bottom feeders that we went along with uh, this morning, we're up to a quarter percent. All right, we're starting to move the right way. I can't see any graph data and I wanna see it. So I'm gonna click on this little wrench right up here on the uh, mini graph. And uh, I just got an alert, so we're gonna go check that in a second. I'm gonna change this to intraday. Whoop. All right, and it looks like uh, we started to head the right direction. We're peeling back here just a little bit, but all in all, we're moving the right way. Down at the bottom, I have two alerts. Looks like uh, Blyer's bottom feeders, okay? We have one uh, piece of, of, of important information already. A sell long order was executed uh, for EMES. EMES has met its stop criteria price at $4.03, uh, crossing below that 5% trailing stop at $5, at $4.05. So what we could do now is simply go into Trade King, close that baby out because it's the one that's hurting us. It was the one that was hurting us the most at the time. All right, and by doing that, we're helping again to mitigate our risk and keep risk in line. You know, from here, I'd just like to open it up to any questions uh, that you might have about uh, today's, today's performance. You know, we're gonna continue to monitor the bell uh, action all the way up until 10 o'clock, see if we can get a more de defined market uh, move. But I think we made the right call for aggressive folks and getting them in uh, to a strategy that was hot right at the open.